Hello, welcome. You want to be a female fitness influencer, yes? Yeah. Okay, let's get started straight away then. We just need to run over a few things first. Do you have any sort of qualifications in health or fitness? No, doesn't matter. Don't need that. Do you have an Instagram account that ends in fit or fitness? Yeah, I started one last night. Big tick there for that. Oh, next up, are you comfortable with about 90% of your feed being focused on your ass? Um, my bum? Yes, on your bum, I guess. Great stuff, okay. I would usually suggest 45% boobs, 45% bum, but can't really see anything there, honey. So let's go with 90% bum for you, yeah? Oh, finally, are you addicted to pre-workout? I, I haven't tried pre-workout. You, you haven't tried it? Okay, so you're gonna have to stop pretending that you are. I definitely recommend starting first of all with dry scooping, choke on it, and then laugh about it on your Instagram story. Oh, okay. Here you go, honey, just take that. Okay, great stuff, I think that's us done here. Thanks. Here are your leggings, your booty band, oh, and your Gymshark contract. Maddie R Fitness here, back with another video. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the female fitness industry and why it's kind of fucked. I wanted to do this video because I myself as a female was kind of tricked by a lot of things I'm gonna be talking about. If you don't know much on health and fitness, as soon as you come into it, you get very confused and you believe everything you see online. So I decided to structure this video with five main points. These are five things which I think a lot of people aren't realizing female fitness influencers are doing and aren't even realizing it's actually kind of toxic. I feel like a lot of videos have been done on this about male fitness influencers where a lot of people say that they're not natural, they talk about the supplements they take, but with female influencers, people just sort of let them get on. So I thought, let's expose it, let's talk about it today. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that all of these women have an incredibly low body fat percentage. I myself follow a lot of women on Instagram who have wanted to have a similar body to them. I wanted to look like them. So I look at their workout programs, I look at the diet that they promote. But realistically, these women have an incredibly low body fat percentage. So I looked into this more and the average woman has between 20 and 30% body fat percentage, which is a lot higher than I thought it'd be. However, I looked into this a little bit more and it was quite clear that 20 to 30% actually isn't that high. With men, it's more so, but with women, 20 to 30% doesn't look overweight. But the women that we're following on Instagram, these fitness influencers, have like 15% body fat and promote that their lifestyle's really easy and that their body was quite easy to obtain. To put this into context, this is JLo. And in this picture, she has between 15 and 17% body fat. We can't all be JLo. And if we do want to be JLo, and if we do want to be these fitness influencers that we see on Instagram and YouTube, you actually have to work for it. Number two, we all have different genetics and people aren't talking about this enough. If I did the exact same workout and had the exact same diet as you, we'd still have very different bodies. Some women lose fat quicker in different places. And that's all down to your genes. Some put on muscle quicker. And a lot of these women on Instagram, these influencers that we follow, Follow, have fantastic genetics. A perfect example of this is Nutty Foodie Fitness. She eats a lot. She eats a lot of things like peanut butter and French toast. And all of those things aren't bad for you, but the amount she eats is a lot for someone that's that small. So she's got incredibly good genetics. And if you look at her parents and she's done videos on this, it's clear that her genes are good. However, the average woman may not have genes like that. So if you copied what she did, you wouldn't look like that. And this is where it gets a little bit funny because these influencers are promoting their lifestyle and saying that it's normal and that they're getting these bodies because of it and it's not always true. Number three, these healthy lifestyles they have often aren't healthy. If you look at a lot of fitness influencers, so many have openly said that they've had eating disorders in the past. Lucy Davis Fit, Anna Archer Fitness, Linda Sun, they've all openly spoken about eating disorders. So. What are your bets that a lot of fitness influencers don't even talk about the fact that they have one? They want to be relatable. They want people to watch their videos and think, oh, I could do that. Because then you're more likely to buy their products. I noticed this recently in a Chloe Ting video. She did a what I eat in a day. And the food that she was eating was quite substantial. They were very big plates. It was healthy food, but it was a lot of food. And you actually never saw her finish a meal. She would cut and say that she was gonna finish it off camera. I'm gonna eat the shrimps off camera because there's no way I can do this nicely in front of camera. Or it would just go to the next clip. And for me, I'm not saying that she's got an eating disorder and she's necessarily not eating that food that she filmed or that she's 
potentially being sick afterwards. All I'm saying is she probably isn't eating those things every single day because she's absolutely tiny and also says she doesn't work out that much. Number four, their aim is to sell you products. So that's how they make their money. So courses, supplements, clothes. And the best way to do this is to tell you that you have a problem and then they can fix it. However, sometimes they sort of slightly make up those things. So they tell you what your problem is when it isn't always that. Or they just make up workout routines which aren't necessarily going to work just because they need to stand out in the industry. So they'll sell you products which aren't always gonna work. Or they will work but not in the time spam that they say it will. I mean, you can see this in most YouTube videos. The thumbnail will say, get abs in two weeks. And it doesn't work like that. You can't achieve those things in such a small amount of time. The fifth and final thing is editing and angles can make the world of difference. These female fitness influencers will put their ass at the front of the picture so it looks bigger. They'll use certain filters to make themselves look more toned. They'll make sure that they take the pictures in the morning when your stomach looks flatter. They make you think that their body looks like that 24 seven when it doesn't. So those are the five things that I think need to be exposed about female fitness influencers. Things that aren't necessarily helping people wanting to get involved in fitness, in health. But if you have anything else that you think is pretty toxic about this industry or I've missed out, definitely put it in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.